We've learned about physical addresses and the physical memory map on the PIC32, but just to make things a little confusing, all software refers to virtual addresses and the virtual memory map. Now the relationship between the virtual memory map and the physical memory map is given by this relationship on the PIC32. Physical addresses are equal to the virtual addresses bitwise anded with one and then seven Fs. Okay, so a bitwise and, we know if we take a bitwise and of a bit with a one, then we just get that original bit back. And if we take a bitwise and of a bit with a zero, then we get a zero back. So all of these Fs here have all ones, so these are not gonna change any of the bits. But this first hex character is a one, and that is, corresponds to bits zero, 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 one. So the end result of this operation here is to take the virtual address and clear the first three bits and set that to be the virtual address. So what that means, or physical address. So what that means is that all physical addresses have a hex representation of the form 0, x0, and seven other characters, or 1 and seven other characters. So the first three bits are all 0. So because we know that the uh, 32 bits or four bytes of our address can represent four gigabytes of addresses, four gigabytes of address, um, what this means is we only have one eighth of those available. We only have the first two out of the 16 characters for the first, uh, first hex character. So that means we get one eighth or four gigabytes divided by eight equals 512 megabytes available to address in our physical memory map. Okay, so we can see that graphically here. So here's our physical memory map. All of our addresses there start with a zero or a one. So we have this 512 megabyte segment. And over here in our four gigabyte virtual address space, each 512 megabyte segment maps down to this same 512 megabyte physical address space. But on the PIC32, only two of these 512 megabyte segments are relevant. In particular, those ones that start with the hex character eight and those ones that start with the hex character A. So this first 512 megabyte segment is called K seg zero or kernel segment zero. And this one is called kernel segment one. Now the significance between these two is that virtual addresses in K seg zero are cacheable and virtual addresses in KSEG1 here are non-cacheable. So what that means is if the CPU is requesting something at a particular virtual address, it's first gonna check whether that virtual address begins with an eight or a nine, and if so, it's gonna look in the cache first. And if it's not there, then perhaps go to program flash to find it directly. Whereas if it begins with an A or a B, in, a, in other words, it lives in K segment one, kernel segment one, then it knows it's not going to be in cache. So if we zoom in on this uh, mapping from this segment to these two segments a little more closely, see it looks like this. So here's our physical memory map that we learned about before with RAM, flash, special function registers, and boot flash. And it maps over to this cacheable segment, KSEG1, as well as this ca non-cacheable segment, KSEG, or sorry, this is cacheable KSEG0, non-cacheable KSEG1. And so what you can see is copies of all of these segments here in KSEG1. But down here in KSEG0, you can see that there's no SFR segment. And the reason is that you can't cache the special function registers. Right? They correspond to hardware on the PIC. For instance, what are the current inputs at my digital input port? And so therefore, that value can't be cached. It's, it's something that sits in hardware on the PIC32. So that's our virtual memory map here, including the cacheable segment. And most of the program code that you write will end up being cacheable so that the, the CPU can execute faster. And the non-cacheable segment. Whenever you reset the PIC, the first thing it does, it jumps to this address here, B0, 
EFC and then five zeros. That's the start of the boot flash segment, and it's non-cacheable. So the PIC starts out by reading these non-cacheable program statements that correspond to what your, your PIC does when it restarts. In our case, this is where the bootloader lives. And then after doing that, it may jump to some segment uh, in cacheable program flash memory. 